Bitcoin has been trading with a 0.9 correlation with the NASDAQ recently. And I'm wondering, why do you think Bitcoin is trading like a tech stock and what needs to happen for it to decouple? Yeah, that's an important question. So I guess what I would say is that, you know, we have 25,000 people or more at this conference. That's fantastic. But we do not yet make the market for Bitcoin, right? So we understand that Bitcoin is the world's best safe haven asset. It's so much better as a safe haven asset than the US dollar, but the majority of market participants still don't believe that, right? They still think when they get scared, when the economy is tanking, they sell all of their risk assets, their risk on assets, and they move to cash. So over time, we as Bitcoiners understand that Bitcoin tr truly is the safe haven asset that we should be flocking to. Now, if I can digress just slightly, I'm very bearish on the US economy right now, you guys. Like, things stink out there right now. The economy peaked in Q4 of 2021, and we are decelerating. Inflation is really miserably high, but I also think that it's close to peaking right now, and we start to decelerate. When you get that combination of factors, that is terrible for risk on assets. We are getting closer and closer to a recession. The Federal Reserve, for their part, they caused all this, but now they're trying to slow the economy down. They want to see a major slowdown. They want to see things slow down because they're trying to tame inflation. So expect to see things like equities, like real estate, like even commodities, which had spiked so high, oil, uh, lumber, whatever, you name it. They're coming down now. We're going to see repricing in lots of these, uh, these asset classes. And it's going to be a tough year. So Bitcoin, getting back to the original question, is highly correlated right now with the NASDAQ. It has about a 90% correlation, meaning that if the NASDAQ moves up, Bitcoin moves up. If NASDAQ moves down, Bitcoin moves down. It won't always be the case, but it is for now. So I would caution people to get mentally ready for what could happen. If you are a long-term investor in Bitcoin, and I truly hope 99% of you are, don't trade Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not for trading. It is the world's ultimate savings technology. It's meant for savings. So think of it like you think your bank account, you don't trade your checking account, right? Thank you. <laughs> and I mean this sincerely. People trade, people ask me all the time my price predictions. It does not matter what the short-term price predictions of Bitcoin are. Quit checking your phone. <laughs> Treat it like it's your savings account, right? You don't trade your savings account. So think of it that way. We are going to have an awesome year of stacking sats. We're going to get more sats for the US dollar or whatever garbage government fiat currency you have. Take advantage of it this year because in two, three, five, ten 10 years from now, you are going to be absolutely ecstatic that you did that. It's going to be awesome for you and for your family and for future generations. And I'll stop there. Dr. Jeff. <laughs> Japan has been able to avoid hyperinflation because they are a massive exporter and have a global economy to work with. But BlackRock CEO Larry Fink recently said that the war in Ukraine is the beginning of the end of globalization. So what happens to countries like Japan and their currencies if we start to deglobalize? Uh -huh. What happens? What happens to all fiat currencies over time? They go down to zero, right? If they can't export their inflation onto other countries as they have been doing, and this is true for any country, they have to deal with it themselves. The, the nature of government fiat currency is that it can be printed infinitely, right? You guys all know math, uh, hat, hat tip to Greg Foss, he's <laughs> listening to this right now? Just math. Right, just, it's just math, 11th grade <laughs> math. If you can print something to infinity, the value of each individual unit goes down to zero over time. That's just math, it's guaranteed. This is what's gonna happen to ja the Japanese yen, it's going to happen to the euro. First, it's gonna happen to about 100 other currencies that are much smaller and weaker. They are going to zero, you guys, and people are going to understand the need and the importance of Bitcoin. They're going to start flocking into Bitcoin because they need to preserve their purchasing power. People are starting to get desperate for some sort of alternative to preserve their purchasing power, right? Bitcoin, because it's perfectly scarce, mathematically, as long as there is continued adoption of Bitcoin, which of course there will be, because it's of course there will be, it's just simply better money, the value over time approaches infinity. That's just what it does. That's what we will experience throughout our lifetime. I'm not saying it's going to infinity, right? Infinity is a concept, not a number, but it will continue to go up. Michael Saylor is right. It's going to go up forever, Laura. Okay? So understand that. Thank you. <laughs>